Hello there, my fine and lovely watchers. Are you by any chance feeling just the tiniest prickle of culinary curiosity? Well, that must mean it's time for another Comic Cook! The show where we take comics and eat them as food. Which just leaves the question, what comic are we turning into food today? What, what, what shall it be? Well, I've been thinking an awful lot about the Vigilante recently. Now, if any of you have perchance watched my latest top ten videos, um, you will probably remember me talking about the Vigilante. Um, suffice it to say, if you haven't heard of him, he's a cowboy-based sort of superhero who does all kinds of nifty stuff, and I'm very fond of him. And he has a sidekick called Stuff the Chinatown Kid who is a kid named Steph from Chinatown. Presumably the New York Chinatown, given that that's where the vigilante normally hangs his hat. So because of that, the two of them tend to hang around Chinatown a fair amount. And so I was thinking... Um, I had uh, the vigilante on my mind, given the recentness of this video, and so I got an idea in my head. The Vigilante's in Chinatown a lot. What if I came up with a dish that hypothetically in-universe could have been made by a grateful Chinatown uh, cook or restaurant owner or whatever to reward him for his good deeds on their behalf, and that he could maybe, like, you know, order up every now and then when he felt like it, and, you know, have for those late-night planning sessions against evil. <laughs> so, that's where I, that's what I, that's my departure point for all this. And so I started thinking, so what would it be? What sort of dish would he make? Well, given the time this was made, the golden age, the 40s, you know, there's really only one dish when you get right down to it, and that would be chop suey. Now, I'm guessing most of you have at least heard of chop suey, but there's a fair chance that at least um, anyone, you know, my age or younger who's watching this prob may not have had it. Um, so, a uh, quick word about about the, the dish first. Chop suey uh, has had the reputation as a stereotypically Chinese food for a long time now, but it's actually Chinese-American. There's various stories to suggest how it was created, but most agree that it probably dates back to the gold rush. And it was very popular for a long time in Chinese restaurants, Chinese-American restaurants. And I say popular, I mean this stuff was everywhere. Chinese restaurants, of course, but also everywhere else, just about from school lunch menus to, well, pick one. There's a chop suey sandwich. I'd love to know what that one was. There's a national chop suey day. No, really, there is. It's August 29th. Look it up. Eventually, however, chop suey lost its prominence as uh, Chinese restaurants started to becoming more focused on uh, actual traditional Chinese food from the motherland as opposed to the stuff that the immigrants had cooked up to suit Western tastes. And personally, I think this is actually kind of a shame. I mean... It's not like sweet and sour pork and fortune cookies have gone away, and they're about as authentically Chinese as chop suey. Besides which, chop suey, you may not be an authentically Chinese dish, but it's very much an authentic American dish. At a time, this was, was almost as popular as the hamburger. You could get it everywhere. So, I don't know. I think that should. It, it's a shame that you can't get it very much in in uh, restaurants anymore. I, I think 
Actually, there are places in the Midwest where it's still popular, but... Ah, uh, well. What you gonna do? Maybe it'll come back. In the meantime, there are plenty of recipes for it online. And I just came up with one of them. Vigilante Chop Suey, ladies and gentlemen. To the kitchen! To make the Vigilante Chop Suey, you will need the following items and ingredients. A knife. A chopping board suitable for the chopping of veggies. Another chopping board suitable for the cutting of meat. A can opener. A small sieve. A cooking spoon. A spoon for the use of the cooking, stirring up things on the stove. That, this kind of spoon. A saucepan, along with lid. A large slotted spoon. If you can't uh, get, if you, or don't have a sl slotted spoon, that's fine. You can just use a, a larger sort of a scoop or a big spoon or whatever. But as you'll see, there's a reason why I, yeah. Paper towels. A one-third cup measure. Measuring spoons. Two small bowls. One a bit larger and deeper than the other. Rice, which is in rice cooker, which is cooking over there, so I can't show it to you. Steak. This is round steak. Oysters. Onion. Bacon. Bok choy. Celery. Molasses. Sugar. Corn starch. A water source, which is over there. And a heat source, which is over there. I.e. a tap and a stove. Or, I guess, hot plate or whatever, but I got a stove. Right. Okay, that's what you will need to make the Vigilante Chop Suey. So, let's make the Vigilante Chop Suey. Now, as you've probably figured out, this uh, meal is going to be a little bit more complex than the other ones I've done. They've been like sandwichy type stuff. But this is, you know, an honest-to-goodness dinner sort of thing, and as such, it requires a recipe. But never fear, in case you have not noticed, it is down below. I have put it down below this video, so don't worry if you can't follow along the video. It's there. I got your back. Anyway, let's start off with the things that I have already done in advance. This uh, steak is, as you can tell, I've already chopped it up. I actually did that um, uh, approximately almost three hours now, uh, three hours ago now, um, and I did that so it could marinate with a bit of salt, um, just like enough to sort of lightly coat, you know, you you, you, you mix it in, when, um, you could probably just do soy sauce if you do soy sauce, but this is how I prefer my sort of stir-fry type things, um, I think it tenderizes it a little bit, anyway. Next, the oysters. Now, um, this is going to take a minute. Obviously, if, you've, if you have some nice, fresh sort of oysters of your own, then um, you can use those instead of this. But I do not, so I'm using these instead. And they're Fine, I assure you. Yeah, I forgot a detail again. Use, you need a spoon, of course, to get these out. And having been gotten out, you'll put them in the sieve, which is over the bowl. Next step, you take the bok choy, and just one head of bok choy, and you chop it up. Um, not super finely, just enough so that it will cook nicely. Now this may look like a lot if you haven't cooked with bok choy. Bok choy is kind of like spinach, it cooks down quite a bit. Next we chop up um, the onion and the celery. It's the, the main part of the celery, you know, the bit you put the peanut butter on, not the top or the bottom. And in both cases, you want to do about a third of a cup's worth. 
doesn't you can be a little less, a little more, but you want to do approximately a third of a cup. Now for the bacon. Now this is nice thick fatty sort of bacon. Um and this is about, it's been already done in like halves, but it should be about a slice and a half, or if you're doing smaller slices, like about two pieces, you know. R basically, roughly what you'd, uh, you'd do for a sandwich would be a good, good guideline. So, yeah. Um, cut it up reasonably small reasonably small so like in sort of sort of little pieces and um come back here and yeah just like sort of like you're like with the with with the the steak like you do for a for a stir fry sort of sort of size or smaller actually little little pieces um doesn't have to be exact, can be rough, but small. There we go. Now here is where the little bowl, the smaller bowl, um, which I mentioned earlier, comes in. And this one has an important role to play, because this bit is kind of what makes a chop suey a chop suey. We take our third of a cup measure and fill it with a third of a cup of cold water and put it in the bowl. Then we get take a, a teaspoon, about a teaspoon, can be a little bit less, a little bit more, of cornstarch and mix it in. Well, yeah, put it in first, that would be a good start. And along with a little bit, no precise amount, just Sort of a small spoonful of sugar. Yeah, put that in, and you mix it all together. And this is what will be going on top of the chop suey. Now, normally, in fact, you should actually you should probably do this near the end of the process, but um, I have consulted experts. And they tell me that this should be fine to do now, as long as you stir it up a, 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 again a bit um, when, when you actually need it so this doesn't settle. So let's hope they're right. So there are our ingredients, all prepped, which means it's time for this stove, which is the exciting part. So let us go to the stove. Right, now the first thing we shall do on this stove is take a couple of paper towels and lay them down. Why are we doing this? We are doing this because the burner has been turned on. The first thing, the first ingredient is the bacon. It is the bacon. And so, the first thing you do is let put the bacon in there and let it cook down. Cook down until it's all nice and crispy. And you want it very crispy because it's going to have to hold up to a lot here. So, I'll just cook the bacon and get back to you in a minute. Ooh, listen to that. Bacon's done. Now then. This is where the slotted, uh, the slotted spoon comes into play. Now see, with this, we take the bacon, and you can see that's nice and crispy, and you put it on the paper towels, so we have to not make a mess. But the, you do not drain out the bacon fat. The bacon fat we are using as the basis for the rest of this little extravaganza. Yes. So that does it for taking out the bacon. You, know, you see, you don't really, you don't need a slurred spoon for this. You can use a scoop, but it's easier. Anyway, 
Now that that bit's done with, time for the next part, which is the stick. Take, 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 and woohoo! Listen to that. Get the steak cooking. Get it cooking up in the bacon fat. Yeah! Woohoo! Listen to that. <laughs> right. So we let the steak cook a bit and uh, turn this down to make it a little more manageable. Yes. And then I'll cut back when it's time for the next step, which will be in just a minute or two once this is done. Now then, once the steak is looking a little bit less raw, you see, and looking a bit more like cooked pieces of steak, at this point you add the celery. And you let that cook down. You let that cook in for a bit, just a minute or so. And now that those have uh, relaxed just a little bit, um, just you don't have to wait very long, you add the onions. And having added the onions, you don't have to wait. You can then add back in the bacon. Mm, come on, last bit of bacon. There we are. And just mix that together. And let that cook down until the raw elements start looking a little bit less raw. Just, um, let's say another minute or two. There, now it's starting to look a little, a little limper. A little more like a stir-fry rather than a set of ingredients. But here is where we depart from the stir-fry aspect of things and start making it a chop suey. Remember our third of a cup measure? Well, we fill that with a third, well, we, well, a third of a cup, we fill it with hot water this time and add it in and cover it. And make sure that's about, yeah, about medium. And we shall now wait five minutes and then uncover it. And our five minutes are up. All the while it's been bubbling and boiling and incorporating itself. Yes. Yes, look at that. Ooh, that looks appetizing already. Now it is time for the next step, which is where the molasses comes in. You take the molasses and our handy dandy teaspoon we used last time, and measure out about a teaspoonful of molasses. Be a bit generous, or whatever, doesn't matter exact quantities, and put it in to add it to the mixture. Um, it may seem a little odd adding molasses to something like this, but it, it, it richens the flavor, so is the theory. Um, and it's worked pretty well so far. Yeah, so just mix that in. And now we're almost to the final stages. It is time first First, the bok choy. Right, just add that bok choy and let it. That's not the thing. Add the bok choy and mix it in. And yeah, you add bok choy and the, ooh, that's not supposed to be there either. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, all the rest of it, as best I can tell, is supposed to be in there. So we let the bok choy um, cook down for just about a minute. Right, that's relaxed a bit. 
looking a little more wilted. And our second to last ingredient, the oysters. Now we add the oysters second to last because they don't take much cooking at all. So we add them in. And just mix them in, mix them in, mix them in. And because they don't take much cooking at all, we shall not delay at all. We're moving on to our final ingredient, the sauce, the cornstarch sauce. It's just cornstarch and water and sugar now. But when you add it here and let it cook down a bit, it shall be transformed into a lovely silky sort of a sauce. Sort of a clearish, thickish sort of a sauce. So now, the only step left is to let this reduce just a little, just a little bit. Let's say about three or four minutes, give or take. Maybe a little less, but reduce a bit. In the meantime, get your uh, plate full of rice, which has been cooking in the rice cooker. I assume I don't have to explain to you how to cook rice. <laughs> yeah. And prepare it, and then combine the two as the last step. So I'll let this finish up and get my rice ready and cut to the end result. And there we have it, folks. The Vigilante Chop Suey. Ooh, just look at that. Try and tell me. Just try and tell me that doesn't look just a little bit appetizing. Ooh, and I wish I, could, I wish you could smell it. It is very lovely and savory. Oh, I'm not waiting more than I absolutely have to to give this one a taste. Let's get to the table. And here we go, folks. The Vigilante Chop Suey which I am looking forward to as I am a ravenous. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. Ah. It's good, I'm telling you. It's good stuff. No. I don't pretend to know if this is anything like, you know, an authentic chop suey, because I've never been at a, at like a restaurant or any place that made them. Mm. I haven't had a chance to compare it to the, you know, something made by someone who knows his stuff. But this is pretty good. Mmm, must say. Oyster and beef and bacon don't exactly sound like marriage is made in heaven, but they kind of flew into each other as flavors. It's a nice kind of a meaty, hearty sort of a thing. And yeah, the sauce, I don't know if you can see, but its sauce makes it all glisten. Hmm. Got lucky there it landed on the plate. <laughs> It's very nice. It's got veggies, it's got meat, it's got seafood. It's, it's great. It's simple, it's relatively quick. I mean, um, let's say maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to make, give or take. But not long. And you get a very nice end result. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I encourage all of you to try it if you were at all interested because speaking as someone before cobbling this d dish together from various other recipes had never made a chop suey in his life, speaking as that person I think it worked out rather well. Mm. Mm. So, 
Give it a try. I think you'll like it. So, I am going to finish this. And in the meantime, to all you out there, bon app.